first thing we do when we pull up the scene, we're going to look at a good spot to park. We might be thinking about our ladder. If we're going to use our ladder, we're going to take the middle of the street so the outriggers can be totally on firm surfaces. We're also going to think about water supply. Should you move up a few feet and will you be able to catch a hydrant with a shorter piece of hose than staying back a few feet? And you're also going to be wor worrying about trees and wires. If you're going to use the ladder, you're, once you stop this truck, you get committed, you put it in pump, you got hoses out, you're not going to move this. So you're going to have to realize right away what's the situation for using the ladder. Okay, we pull up the scene, we go into neutral, we set the brake. We can put on the Aerial Master, since we're up here. We can turn on the generator while we're up here. And then we're going to put it in pump. I'm going to get out to put it in pump so I can show you a little better. But we will do this while we're sitting in the truck because we have to come back to our, our uh, transmission. When we put it in pump, we have to be in neutral up in the transmission. I like to stop halfway. Halfway is a training, halfway is set up for a training evolution. And then we go down into pump, we get a green light. Always cover our brake when we're going to do any shifting. We go into drive, and you see it selects fourth gear. That's the pumping gear. So we know we're in pump. Okay, we're going to pump. The first thing we need to do is get water to the pump. Tank to pump valve. That's the first thing we have to do. We pull the tank to pump valve. As you can see, we have 40 pounds of pressure already without even priming, but we're always going to prime. Whether you need it or not, you could lose your prime, you could suck in some air from a hose on the intake side, who knows, but we're going to prime it. Five seconds is plenty. Now this is a good time to turn the foam on. Before we flow any water, if we have a regular fire of class A combustibles, could be a dumpster, could be a house, could be anything, we turn the foam on. I'm not going to actually turn it on right now, but this is the time we're going to turn the foam on first before we do anything. We could even do it before we do all this other stuff. But we're going to have quicker foam out the nozzle if we, t if we hit it now. Now we come over here, we know we have pump. We have pump pressure. We come over here and we're going to select the PSI mode. I don't know if you can see it very good. PSI mode right here. Now we're going to increase our throttle. This is just a throttle to the engine. We're going to increase the RPMs. An increase of RPMs should show an increase of pressure. We got plenty of pressure. We'll throttle it back down to an idle. So now we have our now we the next thing we would do is we would determine where to, we want the water to come out. A lot of people like to flow a little water to give water a place to go. Um, it isn't necessary really to do that. We do have a uh, a recirculating valve which has a small pipe that'll recirculate water. This you're actually just moving water around for no purpose. If we were to hitch up to a hydrant, we're going to have that show, the pressure coming in from another engine or from a hydrant is going to show on our master intake valve gauge. Uh, pressure around town probably could be around 50 pounds, 30 to 50 pounds depending on where you are in town. So 
if you have a, another engine pumping to you, you only really have to have about 30 to 50 pounds coming in. Anytime you raise RPM, here you're going to see us raise RPM, we get a raise in pressure. You can see this raise in pressure. Anytime you raise RPM and you get a raise in pressure, that means you had enough you had enough incoming pressure to handle that. If you ever raise RPM and don't get a corresponding raise in pressure, you have exceeded the limitations of your water. You could have this gauge, this intake gauge around zero and you could think, oh, there's no more water. But if you could raise RPM and get a raise in pressure, there was more water. That's about the number one thing I think of when I'm pumping. If I'm pumping at my max, I'm more worried about a raise of RPM bringing you a raise in pressure more than where my gauge is here on zero. This gauge could be off by 10 pounds. So this isn't as reliable as raising RPM and getting a raise in pressure. That's a good thing. Raising RPM and getting no raise in pressure is a bad thing. Okay, here we've lost our instructions on this aerial discharge valve. So we might say, well, I don't know what to do. I can't even see which is open. Well, this is red, so we're going to decide that this is closed. This is a, a yellow, I believe, and this is green. So let's just say this is closed, this is open. We're going to hold this thing down. Well, that's not right. That's better. That's how it goes. We're going to hold this thing down, not until it comes off a of red, but we're going to hold this down until it hits green. There it goes. It took a long time. I'm kind of surprised. We can't see what that says. Actually, I could cheat down here. Open, throttled, closed. I don't know of any... Uh, real reason that we would have to throttle this, but it's possible depending on what you have going. Now close it, same thing. We have to hold this down until it goes back into the red.